Okay, look up. Look up. Okay, go to the white packet. Go to item number seven. So white packet, item number seven. Sweet. Can no one talk? No one talk. No, you're good. No, no. That, that's not what I meant. Sorry. That kind of interaction is exactly what I want. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, just trying to get everybody's attention. Okay, so today, last time we spent a lot of time trying to get you to really thoroughly understand the idea of a limit. Today is mostly like interactive practice. Okay, we won't honestly have time to do that all the time. The class just goes too fast to get ready for May 9th. But today it's, it's working really well to be able to like say, hey, answer this and I'll check and see if you're getting it. And we'll just kind of proceed that way. Do you have a few new things to add? But that's the general idea of today. So looking at the graph that's on number seven, um, don't worry about the wording right now. Just look at the graph and write the following on your paper. Write down the limit as x approaches a from the left. And the homework tonight, you're going to be doing this exact same type of analysis. So this is very good practice for the homework. Okay? So you write the limit as x approaches a from the left. And then with one hand, you're going to give me an answer. So if you don't know, you go like this. Otherwise, you go one, two, three, four, or five. Show me. So what is the limit for this function f as x approaches a from the left? Don't know is a fist. Otherwise, give me a number answer. Go. I'm checking everybody. Okay, so give yourself a point for answering. Um, what you should have done is this. Okay, look out, like don't miss, don't miss the demonstration. I'm trying to show you how I'm thinking because you're not supposed to copy what I do. You are supposed to copy how I think. It's a lot harder because you can't see inside my head. So I do my very best to show you what's going on inside my brain. When I read this, my brain says, okay, I should be paying attention to an X coordinate that is not equal to a slightly less. So I go to the graph and I say, well, if it were an x coordinate that were exactly a, I would have to look all along this vertical line and I would try to identify a dot along that vertical line. But that's not where I'm looking. I'm looking a little to the left. So I just look as, like, how do I say, an infinitesimal amount left of that line and I have to find a dot. There are no dots up here, so I just keep going. Eventually, I get to this spot right here, and I notice, yeah, if I could somehow zoom in really, really close, I would see a dot right there. That dot has an x-coordinate of exactly some infinitesimal amount less than a. The y-coordinate is an infinitesimal amount less than two. Therefore, the value of this limit is exactly 2. Okay. You wouldn't want to talk about it. Like anything about that that just does not click in your brain. Uh, I will tell you all year long, how you feel as you're learning, in my opinion, is, is the most important thing. Like you can feel it when it makes sense. But your brain will also warn you when you're like not getting it and you're just copying. And that's when you've got to just wave at me and go, I don't know what to ask, but I just don't see it. Can you show me it another way or something? So Chris, please. Oh, gotcha. So this notation indicates that instead of being exactly x equal a, it's an infinitesimal amount less. That's all. Instead of being exactly 2, it's really 1.9999999 forever. Is that your question? Perfect. Please, Isaac. So what you're asking, I think, you're asking this one. Remember, every time I see your name marked down at point, that encourages a lot of interaction. I believe Isaac is asking for this question. Is that correct, Isaac? So here's how I think if I see that. I go to the graph. I go to the vertical line right where x equals a. And I follow that vertical line and I discover that there are no dots with that x coordinate. 
So this is undefined. Is that your question, Isaac? Perfect. Anybody else? And really, okay, this is the incentive for raising your hand. Your name, you get stuck in my head. What Isaac is asking is what they're going to expect you to analyze on AP test questions is do you understand the difference between what Chris said when you're talking about something that's infinitesimally close to equaling versus something that is exactly equal? That's the whole idea, is be able to understand the difference. Questions? Please. So, when we read this, uh -huh. it's saying the limit of f of x when x approaches a is 2, right? When x approaches a from the left. From the left. Mm -hmm. But we never actually reach 2, or we, so like we're just saying. Like, I thought that's where we're supposed to define it from the other side as well. So is that like you're doing, you're doing it precisely correct. Um, let me add a little bit to it, Taryn. So the way you said it was perfect, um, what you thought was also perfect, that as I, like, like every look, imagine that you were walking dot to dot. Like literally imagine that you walk from one dot to the next. As you go from this dot to this dot to this dot, you're moving that direction. You're moving towards an x-coordinate of a. And so you get closer and closer and closer, but you never reach an x-coordinate of a. That's what limit means. As you do that, the y-coordinate of the dot you're standing on gets closer and closer to 2, but it also never actually equals 2. But limit means imagine you could do that forever. You would get infinitesimally close to 2. Yes. The word limit means identify as you go, as you literally step from one dot to the next, and you did it forever, what would the y-coordinate be if you just kept stepping? Well, you'd never get to a y-coordinate of 2, but you would get, in the vernacular, in the language of young people, you would get dang close. So, you know, dang close. Is that, that, that's that a word you use? Dang close? Freaking close? Is that freaking close? What, what did you say? You get heckin' close. That is a new word. I have not heard that one. Yeah. Heckin' close. <laughs> All right. Shoot. <laughs> we get questions. Are we good? Okay. Now back to what Terrence said. Look. Look, 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 look. On the AP test, there will be questions where they'll only ask you to analyze the left-hand limit. That, that can happen. Uh, on the homework tonight, I'm asking you to do like a thorough analysis. So you're going to do, you're good, you're going to do the left-hand limit, and you're going to do the right-hand limit. So next thing you write on the board is the right-hand limit. So write this down. Okay. Show me what's the answer to the right-hand limit. Fist means I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. Show me quick. Checking everybody. What is the right hand limit as X approaches two from the right? If you're doing this, give yourself two points. Cool. And, okay, again, the key idea is not to do what I do, it's think how I think. Yeah, please. Uh, your question is the perfect lead-in for my next comment. It's perfect, okay? So I'll, I hope this will answer your question. Another point for Kate. Um, again, you want to think how I'm thinking, not do what I'm doing. So I've got the left-hand limit. I've got the right-hand limit. I therefore can now declare the overall limit. So write this on your paper. And here's the key idea. Please don't ever answer the red question by looking at the graph. You always answer the red question by looking at your answer to the blue and the green. Don't ever answer the red by looking at the graph. One second. Always answer by looking at the blue and the green. So Kate, if the blue and the green are the same, then the over, oh, that should be A. How many noticed that? Show me your hands. Show me two points for that. Thank you. Like I, people kept raising their hands, I'm like, wait a minute, I've done something wrong. 
Because Rachel's raising her hand, Mitchell's raising his hand. So no, just let me know if I do that. So that should be an A. If the left and right limits are the same, then the overall limit is that limit. If the left and right limits are different, then the overall limit is non-existent. So in this case, the answer is two. Is that your question, Kate? Yeah, no, we will encounter situations like right now, I'll show you an example where the limits can be different. It's common, so please. Uh, left will always be the negative. Yeah, you got it. Yes, yeah, so, and it's just because that's how a graph is laid out. Okay. Negative would be to my left, positive would be to my right. Nope. Makes sense, Katie? Yeah. It's perfect. Anybody else? Uh, that's another thing that I really encourage in this class, is I just want you thinking with me. So it's very common to say, wait a minute, if I got it right, is this, my, am I thinking correctly? You can always ask that. Like I had a student one time tell me, they asked a teacher, and the teacher's like, no, you can't ask. I'm like, what? That's like, Sorry, it blew me away. I'm like, that's the most important thing is I like, confirm that you're thinking correctly. So anyway, we good? Perfect. Um, grab a card. On the front side of the card, write the word discontinuity and then question mark. Yeah, I, don't blame me for saying that, Rachel. I'm going to cheat and just show you on the next page. Go, if you look... It's right there. Oh, yeah, no kidding. I'm with Rachel on that one. So you just want to write the word discontinuity on one side and then like a question mark to remind you that you're supposed to know something about discontinuities. So discontinuity on one side, question mark. Okay, on the back side, um, you're going to have to uh, kind of be a little bit careful about what we write, so don't write anything yet. I'm going to kind of give you information, and I'll show you what to write on the card. Um, as it says here in your notes, item 11, there are three types of discontinuities, and you want to memorize them in alphabetical order. Jump, removable, and vertical asymptote. Okay? So you'll need to have that memorized uh, in alphabetical order. I'm bringing it up right now because the problem we are currently discussing, notice, the left limit and the right limit match. If the left and right limits do not match, then you have a jump and you're done analyzing. You don't keep going. So that's the importance of the alphabetical order. So if left and right do not match, you have a jump, stop. So on your flashcard, that's the first thing I would write, is this, I'll spell it out for you here. Just write something like this, basically. If the limit from the left and the limit from the right do not match, that's a jump. That's the first type of discontinuity you always look for. So if the left and right limits do not match, that's a jump. So that's the first thing to put on your flashcard. Now, we don't have that situation because the one I just showed you, the left and right limits do match. So again, you're checking things in order. So you're first checking to see if the left and right limits match or don't. If they don't match, you have a jump. If they do match, you've got to check something else. You've got to check the value of the function. So here's what you're going to write on your flashcard. You're going to write, so you've already got this one indicating when left and right don't match, that's a jump. Next thing you write on your card is, well, what if they do match? If they match, then you're going to compare the overall limit to the function's value. You're going to compare the overall limit to the function's value. I should have put an A here, sorry. You're going to compare the overall limit to the function's value. Like so. If, because you know the overall limit because you just found the left and right. So you find the left and right. If they do not match, you have a jump. If they do match, you know the overall limit. And then you compare the overall limit to the function's value. If those don't match, you have a removable discontinuity. So that's the order. Jump first, then removable. 
get that written down, I'll pause. Please, Rachel. Uh huh. No worries. So, and this is what will happen in the homework as well, so you'll get some good practice tonight. So you look at a function, and it says, I want to analyze the continuity. So what you do is you find the left and right limits first. If they are different, you have a jump. That's the first type of discontinuity. If they're the same, you don't have a jump, so you gotta keep going. So now what you do is you say, well, I know the left and right match. That means I know the value of the overall limit. But I've gotta make sure that overall limit, they gotta compare that to the function's value itself at the point. If those two don't match, then you have a removable discontinuity. Now, Isaac, please. So, number seven, that's exactly why I brought it up. Because on number seven, as we were practicing, we found that the left-hand limit is equal to two. We found that the right-hand limit is also equal to two. So because left and right match, we knew the overall limit was also a value of two. But then when we did what you asked about, Isaac, when we went and said what's happening right at x equal a, we found that there was no point, so these two are not equal, therefore a removable discontinuity. Whereas if we had done the same thing here at item B, we would find the left and right limits don't match, that's a jump discontinuity. So, Other questions or concerns? Outstanding. So just practicing really quick then. So on your flashcard, it should say discontinuity is on the front. You flip it over. First one is jump, which means left and right limits don't match. Second one is removable. There will be a third here in a moment. Uh, do this real quick just to make sure. Write on your paper item 8. Write the limit. As x approaches a b this time from the left, And show me with your hand the answer to item B. I mean, again, a fist means I don't know. So show me the limit as X approaches B from the left. Checking everybody. Okay, everyone in the room, give yourself two. I don't always care that everyone gets it right. I just care that I can see how we're doing. So... There were some who looked a little uncertain based on their vote. Here's how I think about what's being said here. I've got to go find where on the graph are there dots whose x-coordinates are slightly less than b. So I go exactly to x equal b. I mentally imagine a vertical line. I pay no attention to the green line. I've got to find any dots that are just a little bit negative of that line. So a little bit to the left. So I'm looking just a little bit left of that green, and I don't see any dots here. Uh, now I found one. So there is a dot right here. And if I do what I said to Taryn, I imagine walking along here, dot to dot. As I take one step after another, I notice that my x-coordinate is getting extremely close to equaling b. It never will because I never go all the way. Gets really close. The y-coordinate is going to get really close to 2. It's going to be slightly more. Like if I were to label that red dot, I'd say that's at slightly less than b and slightly more than 2. Which means this limit is exactly two. Anyone want to talk about that? Please. So two things are happening near a y coordinate of one and an x coordinate of b. That's what you're referring to, right? Yeah. Everybody look. Marielle's asking Marielle is asking exactly the right question. Two things are happening near x equal b. Exactly at x equal b, 
So this notation, exactly at an x-coordinate of b, the y-coordinate is precisely 1. If I look a little bit to the right, so I go find the limit, as x gets close to b from the right-hand side, again, you must think how I'm thinking. Your eye should be drawn to right here as best I can draw. Like not at, not at the next corner to B, but just a little bit more. At that spot, we are getting still infinitesimally close to a value of 1. Is that your question? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Please. Luke. So this one, left limit, does not match the right-hand limit. That's the first thing you check. Since they do not match, Luke is dead on jump and you stop looking. It's, it's not going to be a removable and a jump. It's just a jump for our class. It's one or the other. So, Questions? Outstanding. Cool. Uh, let's go to the next item here. So we've already talked about all of that. So keep going here. Okay, last type of discontinuity we must have you write on your flashcard is vertical asymptote. Uh, let me clear this off. Okay, a vertical asymptote, so again, it's, there's a sequence. You check the left limit, you check the right limit. If they are the same, sorry, if they are different, you have a jump, stop looking. If they're the same, you then check the value of the function to see if you have a removable. Okay. Vertical asymptote is very different. What you're going to find on a vertical asymptote is this. If I try to find the limit, so this is the vertical asymptote example, as x approaches, in this example, negative 1 from the left, and I do the method I keep complementing Terran for, so she keeps getting points, I go point by point. I go from this point, to another point, the board's picking up on other things here, point by point, and this graph is kind of drawn incorrectly, that should have an arrow, so you can keep stepping one point after another, you can keep getting closer and closer to an x coordinate of negative one, but if you never get to x equal negative one, the y coordinates simply become increasingly negative. They never stop becoming more and more negative. So this limit is non-existent. There isn't a number that we're approaching. The value is just getting more and more negative. So that is a non-existent limit from the left-hand side. You don't want to talk about that. That's what happens near a vertical asymptote. It's the third type of discontinuity. So jump and removable they kind of feel similar. I compare left and right limits. If they're different, I have a jump. If they're the same, I might have a removable. Vertical asymptote, totally different. Like I find limits that just are non-existent. So. Cool. Uh, if you check the right-hand limit, you're going to get the same thing. I kind of summarize that here. Right here. So item 15 has a good summary of what happens when you have a vertical asymptote. So you need to put that on your flashcard as well. Third type of discontinuity, vertical asymptote, is when left and right limits are non-existent. So. Questions about anything? Um, I call it overall because I feel like otherwise I kind of confuse all of you as to which one I'm talking about. I believe in a general sense they just refer to it as the limit. Yeah. Point for Taryn. Anybody else? Good, good, good. Okay, let's just practice again. Um, so looking at item 15, uh, write this on your paper. Write the limit 
as x approaches uh, 0 from the left and show me on your hand what the limit would be as x approaches 0 from the left. Show me. Checking everyone. If you don't know, show me a fist. If you're doing this gesture, please give yourself two points. <clears throat> Go like this if you need me to demonstrate. Okay. So um, x equals zero. Here is exactly x equals zero. I am not looking there. In fact, um, look at the board. A really common question at this point in the year is the following. Students will call me over and they'll say, if I'm trying to find this limit, do I look at the open circle or do I look at the dot? Uh, who said neither? Perfect. You don't look at either one. No, it's Soraya, yeah? Um, you don't look at either one. That's the whole idea. If I'm looking for a limit, I should not be looking at the open circle or the dot <laughs> because those are located at x equals zero. Limit means look close to x equals zero. So I don't look at either of those. I look right here. Good. It's a perfect comment. <laughs> it's perfect. I look there and say, that blue dot, if I could imagine it being infinitesimally close to x equals 0, the x-coordinate would not be 0. It would be infinitesimally less. Uh, in this case, it does look like the y-coordinate would probably be exactly 2. That's fine. All I care is that when x is almost 0, what is the y-coordinate infinitesimally close to equaling? Uh, the correct answer is 2. So, in this case, it actually does equal 2. Please, Chris, are you good? Okay, questions? Please. So you follow the line, line? Keep talking. So you like follow the line? So when you said follow, you're, no, the question is, is valid. You're talking about this line here? Yeah. yeah, except change the way you think of it a little bit. The way you said it was perfect. Just think of it as, back to Taryn, sorry, dot by dot. Like you're just stepping. Somehow that was funnier than I expected. <laughs> yeah, don't believe Luke. Ask me. So, Okay, yeah, no, Luke was dead on. So I'm trying to say your names a lot, so you keep marking Every time I say your name, you mark it down, you know. So, um, Yeah, you go step by step, just like one dot to the next. You just imagine, like, I'm on this dot, now I'm on this dot, now I'm on this dot. My x-coordinate is getting very close to zero but I can't ever step to zero. <laughs> like I'm forbidden from taking that last step. Um, but as I do that, the y coordinate is going to get very close to equaling 2. Anybody else? Awesome. Uh, answer this one real quick. Show me on your hand the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. Show me. I never try to give you a trick question without warning. So if it ever feels like I'm trying to trick you, I'm not. It's just, oh, it's easy. I just, just got to know. I just got to get feedback that you really know it. So if you're doing this, give yourself two more. Okay. Questions? Sweet. Answer this one, please. Show me. Show me. Okay, everyone gets a point for voting. But there were a few mistakes. Let me clarify. Okay, look here. All, all eyes on the board. Okay, a few people made the following error. 
when they saw x approaching zero, they mistakenly let their brain think x equals zero. And so their eye went to the graph and they started looking where x is zero. That'd be here along the red line. Don't look there. When you are finding the overall limit, you look at the left and the right. You, you should not look at the graph to answer this. You should look at the purple and the green. So when I'm answering the overall limit, I only look at the purple and the green. I go, oh, those are the same. That limits two. I don't even look at the graph at all. So, questions? Cool. Awesome. i uh, answer this one now. This one you have to raise your hand to answer. You will not be able to give me a valid hand gesture. So hands up if you know the answer to that. What is f of zero? <clears throat> What's f of zero? Just waiting for a few more hands. Trying to get everybody to raise their hand. Perfect, Riley. So we'll make our best kind of estimate. We'll say about 1.6. Is that okay? So how many thought this roughly? Like it doesn't be exact. How many thought it? Hands up, hands up. How many were on the right page? Perfect point. Okay. Yeah, you're not expected ever on the AP test to be like, oh, it's really 1.65. Like, close enough. So. Anybody else? Awesome. Okay. I'm going to have you say it out loud. So you're either going to say the word jump, removable, or vertical asymptote. Which of the three discontinuities do we have here? Jump, removable, or vertical? Say it. Removable. The left and right are the same, but the value of the function is different. So that's a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. Question. Please. So if the dot wasn't there, it would just be removable. So at the solid dot here. Uh, good question. Hold on. Two points for Ben. So Ben, I want everyone to answer this. So as shown, we have a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. We have a removable discontinuity at x equals zero. If we do this, cool, huh? Um, we take away the dot, okay? Magic of whiteboard, yeah, it's cool. So I, I don't know why that excites me so much. Like, you can make things disappear. Um, okay, if we take away the dot, please raise your hand. Do not shout it out loud. What type of discontinuity do we have now? Hands up. Don't let it fool you. This is how they get you on the AP test. They just try to make something just a little bit different, and then your brain goes, ah, this is unfamiliar. You go back to the definitions. If you are always using your flashcards to answer every question, they can't fool you. So you say, okay, wait a minute. Definition says, if the left and right limits are the same, but the value of the function is different, that's removable. So in this situation, hands up again, what do we have? Let's go Kate Crofts. You're okay. Stay with me, Kate. It can't be a jump because jump says the left and right limits must be different. So because the left and right are the same, cross off jump. It can't be a jump. Hands up again. So we know it's not a jump. Lillian, Lily, sorry. Wait, I'm asking kind of two things. Like what would f of zero be and what type of discontinuity would we have? You're okay. Stay with me, stay with me. Two points for Lily. F of zero is absolutely undefined if we take away the dot. What type of discontinuity do we have, Chris? That's all you have to look for. Because the overall function value would be undefined and the left and right limits are two, the left and right limits don't match the value of the function, hence removable. That's the definition. That's why I say, in this class, you don't want to copy problems. You want to understand the flashcard, and then you just keep using the flashcard. And then whatever situation they give you, no matter how weird it seems, you go, this feels weird because I've never seen it before, but the definition says, if my left-right limits are the same, but my function value is different, that's removable. Okay, questions? 
please. Uh, this is nonlinear already. Like I'm, I confuse you somewhat. Nonlinear just means the dots are not arranged in a straight line. So most of the functions we study will be nonlinear. But that's probably not your question, really. Oh, gotcha. Different. So right, you have the right thought, just wrong word. Um, what Harrison is thinking of is, are we ever going to deal with a situation where we have something that's not a function. The vertical line test is all about a function. Um, not really important for our class. Like I've never seen any need to do the vertical line test. I've never seen a problem where I had to think about it. So really, if you just stick with the definitions I gave you, you're, you're all set. Just, just apply exactly what I gave you as far as jump removable. Question, please. Um, let me, can I erase this real quick? So when we started, if I'm looking for f of 0, i to adjust my marker here again. Um, I go to where x is equal to exactly 0. So all along this purple line, every single x coordinate is 0. Are you comfortable with that? OK. I need to find if there are any dots along that line. There is. It's right here. And I don't know the y coordinate exactly, but my best guess was about 1.6. Good question. Keep talking, Question. Everybody look. The open circle is an indication that there's nothing there. So I don't go there because there's nothing there. Just like there's no dots here either. They don't put open circles up here. But those open circles mean exactly the same thing as that open circle. There's nothing there to look at. Does that make sense? Point for a question. Keep marking every time I say your name. Um, look here. The purpose of the open dot, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, is so you can find the dots that are close to it. The, the purpose of the open dot isn't to look at the open dot. It's to say, oh, that's there so I can identify that, hey, there's a dot right here that's really, really close. That's why there's that open circle. Ideally, we would draw the open circles much, much smaller <laughs> because they're indicating the absence of one dot. The dot that is located at 0, 2. Like that open circle doesn't have anything there. If it did, it would be at 0, 2. And nowhere else. So I do kind of a weird, that's really hard to read, but whatever. Um, that's a little better. So, questions. That answer your question. Cool. Anybody else? Solid. Um, let's just do one more practice here to make sure. Um, do this one, please. Okay, show me with your hand what that is. Go. Just kind of keep it all quiet. So it's like I know you can look around, but the whole idea here is just to get see if everybody's got it. Everyone, give yourself two. Um, a few people looked a little uncertain. I would go to exactly x equal 2, go a little bit to the left. So here's x equal 2. Slightly left, I'm looking for a dot. The only dot anywhere along that red line that's on the left-hand side of the red line would be a dot right here. That dot is at an x-coordinate slightly less than 2. That dot has a y-coordinate slightly more than 2. Therefore, the left-hand limit here is exactly 2. Questions? I don't want to talk about it. Let's do this one then. Do the limit from the right quick. So limit as x approaches 2 from the right. Come your head. Got P 
people being creative. Some are going like this. Some are going like this. Don't do anything. Just don't do anything inappropriate, please. Um, that's a bad joke. Sorry. Um, so if you're doing this, give yourself a point. Questions? Cool. And as somebody mentioned earlier, uh, the left and right limits not matching is telling us that we have a jump at x equal 2. So. Now, don't get the wrong idea. On an AP test, if they give you a graph, you're just going to look at it <laughs> and go, oh, easy. Here's a removable. Here's a jump. Here's a vertical asymptote. Like, you don't really have to do any analysis. I'm having you do analysis in the homework because it's your first exposure to limits. You've got to learn to use the right notation. Half of the AP test is written. If you don't use the right notation, you lose points. So part of the homework is going to feel a little bit like busy work, which I hate, because I hate giving you any busy work. But there's just no way around it. You've got to get used to, hey, I must use the correct notation. You can't do a shorthand. It's got to be correct. Or they won't give you points. Okay. Questions? Please. Um, in the homework, I'm going to have you do something very specific, um, Grace. I'm going to have you do left-hand limit, right-hand limit, overall. And I confess, it's a little bit of busy work to get used to an idea. So you're going to write left, right, overall. You'll say non-existent. In the homework, if you don't want to write out non-existent, you can write D and E is okay with me. On the actual AP test, we'll want to use the word non-existent. And then you're going to write F of 2. Let's get everybody to vote on that one. Show me with your hand what's the value of F of 2 for this problem. Show me quick. What's the value of F of 2? What's the value of F of 2? If you're doing this, give yourself two more. So back to um, Grace's question. Hey, all, all eyes here. In the homework, about half of the assigned problems, this is exactly what you do. You write left limit, right limit, overall limit, function value, and then you just have a conclusion. The reason I'm having you do it is because in the written section, that's what you'll have to do. If you leave off any of them, they will take away points. So in a multiple choice, I wouldn't write anything. i just think about it because you don't really have to write it. It's just on the written section. Does that answer your question? Perfect. Anybody else? Please. Yes, in fact, um, the first four problems in the homework packet, we've already basically practiced. So you should be able to just kind of do it again to make sure you're not forgetting. It's this exact graph, and I ask you to do this process at four different places. Yeah. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Okay, so just practicing together. So just answer as a chorus when I cue you. If the left limit is different than the right limit, please tell me what type of discontinuity. Say it. Good, okay. If the left and right match, but the function value is different, that's called a removable. removable. And then I'll just say this one. If the limits are you know, non-existent, we have a vertical asymptote. Um, there's one more thing you've got to memorize. So new flashcard. On the front, write definition of continuous. The AP test sometimes uses that wording, so I want you to get familiar with it. Definition of continuity, I guess is what I should have said. Sorry, either way is, is close enough. Definition of continuity. On the back side, here's what you write. actually printed right here on item one second where'd it go come on right there item 16 just copy that little thing I've got in the blue box I guess honestly you probably should copy the whole statement it would be better um, just item 16 is what you need to have on that other side of the card if the left limit and the right limit are the same and they equal the function's value, you don't have a discontinuity. That 
tells us the function is continuous. Please, Luke. Vertical. Gotcha. So here's what Luke is imagining. We have a graph, and the graph consists of a vertical line at some spot, whatever. You don't really care, right? So, um, vertical line. I don't think they would ever ask that question, although it is a good question. Uh, because what you have here is it cannot be continuous because to be continuous at x equal 2, I'd have to say that the left-hand limit, which doesn't exist because there is no point to the left, and the right-hand limit, which doesn't exist because there's no point to the right, <laughs> would have to be the same as the function's value in the middle. But the function's value in the middle, like, yeah, it just, it's, it's a case that just does not fit at all with the definitions we're discussing. They're not going to ask it, but does that kind of help understand? Yeah, perfect. Anybody else? Okay, so you have a flashcard now that tells you continuity, yes? Nodding is helpful. Okay, good. Um, okay, next thing. Uh, let's just, so let's, so in the homework, that's all you're doing, is like I showed you here, you're just um, doing the analysis and then you're stating what type of discontinuity, or in some cases you'll say, oh, the function's continuous. That's really, so, okay, the disclosure stated, I do it on purpose because I don't want to mislead you. The disclosure says hour and a half to two and a half hours of homework is what to plan on. Um, I don't want to mislead anybody. That does happen, and it happens reasonably regular enough. Tonight should be pretty quick. Like, if this is making sense to you, it should go pretty fast. It shouldn't be even close to that. So uh, let's do a couple more practice things. So go to the sheet that, um, shoot, Anna, yeah, Anna's on. Um, this one that looks like that, <laughs> okay? Do that sheet. I'm gonna walk the room as you're doing it. If any doubt at all is creeping into your mind about anything, you stop me and let's talk. So go. You can work together as well. That's fine. Use is always undefined. When they're talking about a limit, they'll use the word non-existent or does not exist. I, there's some subtle reasons why. Not really important for the AP test, but that's what they'll do. You'll never see a multiple choice question, though, where like they have both answers. Like, they're not that cruel. <laughs> Say, let's see if the students remember the word we like. They don't do that. Say. Um, number nine, what does it say? Three. Questions? Nine is three. Everybody good? Okay, come over here. <sighs> number one, say it. Three. Two. Zero. Three. Funny. Four. It yeah, does not exist, non existent. Um, five. Two. Good work. Six. Two. Seven. Two. Eight. Zero. Nicely done. Nine. One. Good work. Questions. Go to the next sheet. Flip it over. Okay, listen. Um, it's not realistic to tell you that on an AP test, they would give you a graph and ask you to do this type of analysis. Like, I'm going to have you do the homework because it's your first experience, and graphs are a bit easier to work with. But on the actual AP test, they won't give you a graph and ask you to do this type of analysis. Um, it is very common to have a written question, something like one of these four, though, and ask you to do the analysis. So to kind of help you, I've already written out what analysis you should do. You just got to make sure you understand. Oh, wrong one, sorry. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
you can, it's a little hard to tell sometimes whether Mr. Rukti is actually angry <laughs> or just trying to be funny. So yeah, anyway. Um, but, I have, but I have heard the difference on occasion. <laughs> um, I've been across the wall from him for 16 years. This will be my 16th year I've been across the wall. Um, 16 years ago, his temper was a bit quicker. <laughs> He's mellowed. Like there were times when I like, like I was afraid. <laughs> like, like, like you could just hear how angry, like, and it was legit. He was, he was legitimately angry. Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know. <laughs> That's a very good imitation, actually. <laughs> yeah, also a very good imitation, yeah, yeah. He's very, he has his phrases. <laughs> Sugar to the booger, he always says that, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So once again, in the homework, you will do exactly what you're doing here, okay? So we're just going to practice these together. What's new here is it's a piecewise function. So instead of being um, a graph, it's formulas. Look at me. It's not any harder as long as you are thinking correctly. This, that, that's a really dumb thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, that was pretty stupid. It's not hard if you think correctly. Yeah, whatever. Um, I had a student one year, uh, had her twice. And I have awesome memories of her, so this is a compliment to her. Like, I, I still have wonderful memories of her. Her name was Rochelle Curtis. She sat in class, and every time I would say something like that, she would, like, note it down. And she gave me a book, eight pages <laughs> of dumb things I said. So it was good. It was funny. <laughs> okay, look. I'm supposed to find the limit as X gets close to three from the right. Watch. As x gets close to 3 from the right, all I have to do is look at the formula and say, well, if x is going to be a little bigger than 3, the formula I should be using is this one. The other formulas are not valid for x values that are larger than 3. So now all I have to do is say, well, what does limit mean? Limit means when the x value is slightly bigger than 3, please identify what is the corresponding y coordinate getting close to? So the, my brain says, let's think. If it were exactly 3, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So if it's slightly more than 3, still going to be really close to 7. So the limit is 7. It's that simple. The key is understanding which part of the formula to use. It's reading the formula and understanding that they're telling you when you have x-coordinates that are just an infinite, you know, infinitesimal amount larger than 3, then you must use this formula to figure out the y-coordinate. Question about anything? Please, Katie. Everybody look up. Two points for Katie. Uh, no, because... This formula is only valid if the x you are plugging into the formula is like bigger than zero, something like this, or less than three, something like this. So that formula cannot be used to answer question one. Does that answer your question? Good work. Anybody else? Now when you go to question two, however, now we're exactly where Katie was looking. X being slightly less than three, that's right here. So I say slightly less than three, that's like this value. But no one expects you to square 2.999. Okay, don't do that. You say, well, three squared is nine. Nine minus two is seven. So I'm going to be really, really close to 7. I won't be exactly 7, but I will be very close. Questions? Raise your hand if you know the answer to 3, please. Just raise your hand. What is the answer to 3? Let's go, Hannah. So on item 3, I should not look anywhere but right here. Just compare the two limits. 
Since they are the same, that is also 7. How many knew it? Point. Okay. Oh, talk to me, Luke. Right. Uh, listen to Luke, please. Look, come on, look, 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 look. Okay. Weight is the right answer. Um, I, you're good. Two more points for Luke. Hey, I bring it up for a really important reason. It is, it's human nature. Everybody does it. As soon as they see X approaching 3, they want to go look at the 3. It has nothing to do with 3. Item, you know, this item is always answered by looking at these two items. Don't look at the 3. Questions? Cool. Raise your hand if you know the answer to 4, please. Raise your hand if you know the answer to 4. Let's go root. So now we look where X is exactly 3. So we look here. And the formula tells us that if you have an X coordinate of 3, the Y coordinate will be 2. How many knew it? Point. Rachel, please. Yes, no, well said. Um, listen to Rachel's question. Maybe this helps, maybe it doesn't. I almost look at it like an index. Like this column, Rachel, is going to tell me what X coordinates I'm using. The corresponding item tells me that's the formula I use. I don't know if that helped or not. Not really. Um, basically, I've got to figure out you know, which formula to use, and the formula changes based on the X I'm using. The right-hand column tells me the X information. This column tells me how to calculate the Y values. Does that help better? Okay, good. Keep marking down every time I say your name, Rachel. Anybody else? Awesome. Uh, please say it out loud. Get ready. What type of discontinuity does this first function have? Say it. Removable. Removable. The left and right are the same, so it's not a jump, but the value of the function is different. That's a removable discontinuity. That's what you do in the homework tonight. Okay. Awesome. Um, do the rest. I'm going to walk the room, then we'll check it. Go. Hold on. You're good. So again, let's just say it real quick. Here we go. Uh, number five, say it. Six. Seven. Eight. Questions? What type of discontinuity? Oh, go ahead, Luke. No, 7 is just asking for the overall limit, and listen close. Overall limit is always found by looking at the left and right. In this case, because they don't match, you say non-existent. Yep, non-existent. Please. Yeah, Michael, right? No one talk. Don't talk. Uh, it's nothing to stress about, but when finding a limit, they'll use the word non-existent. When finding a function's value, they'll use the word undefined. Is that your question? Perfect. Okay, we've got to get through this so I can taste some of the homework fast. Nine, what's nine? Say it. Ten. That's funny. Is nine ten? Yeah. What's ten? Five. What's eleven? Twelve? Seven. Questions? Okay. So that's a jump because the left and right did not match, correct? Okay. 13, 14, 15, then this is back to Michael's question. Here's where you'd say undefined. Okay, okay. listen, last thing. The